Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Welcome back. In this lecture, I'm going to begin chapter four with an example of computation of a line integral that builds on all of the developments at the end of the last chapter. Okay, let's consider a vector field of the following form. A of x, y, z is x squared i plus y squared j plus z squared k. And we're going to compute the line integral between two points, P1, 1, 0, 0 on the x-axis, and P2, 0, 1, 0 on the y-axis. And we're going to compute it along three different paths. So the first path will be along the x-axis from P1 to the origin and then uh, from the origin to P2 along the y-axis. So in this case, the first path segment, dy and dz, is zero, and then the second path segment, dx and dz, is zero. So this is pretty easy. We just plug in The variations in the vector field evaluated on the path, and we get zero in that case. Okay, now we're going to compute it along a different path, along a straight line in the xz plane from p1 to 0, 0, 1, and then from 0, 0, 1 to p2. All right, now that is best easily seen with a picture. So in the xz plane along this path, and in the yz plane along this path. Okay, so we have to parameterize the paths. So we know the equations for these line segments in those planes. Okay, and then we can relate dz to dx with dy is zero. And in the yz plane, the line segment is given by this with dx equals zero. And dz and dy are related through the first expression. A little more involved at the first one, but we plug these the quantities into the general expression for the line integral. we get zero again. And our third path, this is going to be a path in the xy plane along three quarters of the unit circle from P1 to P2. So cosine t and sine t parameterize a circle in the xy plane. z is zero, so dz is zero, so we're in the plane from 0 to t, t, t equals 0 to t equals 3 pi over 2. Now, if you evaluate at t equals 0, what do you get? You get 1, 0, 0, p1. At t equals 3 pi over 2, you get 0, 1, 0, p2. Okay, and then what about dx and dy? Use the chain rule. dx is dx dt dt dy is dy dt dt. So the path is parameterized in terms of t. And if you plug that into the expression for a dot dr, you're going to get zero again. So we've computed a line integral 
from P1 to P2 along three different paths, and we always got the same answer, zero. Does that mean it's independent of path? Well, the same answer for three paths is not, does not allow us to conclude that it would be the same answer for any path, but it's pretty good evidence. We could check this very easily just by computing uh, the curl of the vector field and showing that that's zero. But you can also see almost by inspection that the vector field is given by the gradient of this scalar valued function. Now you need to remember what the definition of gradient is. It's the vector of partial derivatives, but if you plug in the definition of gradient, remember that dr is dx i plus dy j plus dz k. Remember what it's supposed to give you, a total, dif total differential, total derivative. So we, now we just evaluate phi at, the, at p1 and phi at p2, and we see they're equal, so we get zero. Okay, so this vector field has the property that its curl vanishes, that it's also that it's given by the gradient of a scalar valued function. So the line integral between any two points depends only on the endpoints. It's independent of the path that you take. All right, and there's a sort of a, not my best effort at drawing a freehand sketch of the uh, circle in the xy plane, the three quarters of the circle in the xy plane. Okay, that's enough for path integrals, for line integrals, sorry. Uh, sometimes people call them path integrals. I want to avoid a confusion with a path integral that comes up in quantum mechanics. That probably won't confuse you right now, but it may later on. It's the same idea. You're integrating along a space curve. Uh, so path integral, line integral. All right. In the next lecture, we're going to get into dynamics with Newton's axioms, Newton's laws. Why do I call them axioms? That'll be for next time. So, bye for now.